At this point, I feel like it's part of their brand strategy. Why is the ice cream <laughs> team not working? It has Again. to be. It has Again. to be. Feeling like, am I, is this really good enough? Like, did I really do a good job on this? Can I really charge for this? And like, when you put a price out there, you're like, are they going to pay it? Then right. you can still manage home. You can still take care of your husband. You can be a wife. You can be a mother. And you can have, what is it? Prosperity in all of your business dealings. Right. Welcome to the show. We have a very, very special guest today, Miss Javana Kimberly. Javana, I am so glad to have you with us. You are a brand strategist. You are a mommy to three beautiful, amazing children. And we really want to get into your story about how you got here, how it is that you're serving people, and how people can get in contact with you. So we're going to go on a really, uh, really deep journey. I'm excited for it. So Javana, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Yeah, so I'm a brand strategist and I'm a brand designer, also a designer. I have three children, like you said. I help mom coaches and service providers build purposeful brands. Um, I basically help them with clarifying their position, master their messaging, and building their, their identity based off the skill sets that they already have. I try to focus on helping stay-at-home moms because I know stay-at-home moms, they have a lot on their plate. They have brilliant ideas, but... They're just not seen in the marketplace and they need someone to advocate for them to help them get out there with these ideas and build on these passions that they have. So that's pretty much what I do. Is that how you got into it? Were you like a stay-at-home mom or? Yes? I am a stay-at-home mom. Nice. I've been a stay-at-home mom for 12 years, actually. Wow. <laughs> um, my children are older now. My oldest is 15, but I've been at home since forever. <laughs> um, and I've been managing trying to go to school. I got my college degree. Um, I was there taking care of my children. My husband worked full time. We actually like moved from New Jersey to Arizona. So it's been a lot of changes. So I had to like be the one in the home, but I always had a passion to still do more things. Like I, I, I just can't be at home and only do <laughs> the things of motherhood. So, you know, I always was trying to fill like that void. But even with school, I didn't feel fulfilled. Like I went to school right. for healthcare administration and it just, after I graduated, this was during the pandemic, it just didn't feel exciting to me. I had more of a thrill, like building my website when I started like a boutique that I had for my kids. Um, yeah. And it was just fun for me. So I was like, you know what? I went through this journey. I know someone else out there is going through this journey. Like, how can I help them? you know, go into the mompreneurship without facing all the challenges that I was facing. So yeah. yeah, pretty much at home, but still building a brand at the same time. I think it's beautiful too, especially because you've gone down this journey. So you know exactly what that person is going through. So right. when they're listening, they can resonate. They're like, oh, she understands me. She knows that struggle of waking the kids up, getting them off to school. It's not stay at home. Mom does not mean I'm not doing anything. Cause you gotta, right. after you drop the kids off to school, it's clean up, do all the things. So you understand exactly where they're coming from and how to really find those pieces of time to build their brand. I think that that's beautiful. Right. Um, wow, that's so good. So, all right, I want to understand like how this passion for design really came to be because you did mention you went to school for something else and now like pivot, we're going in a whole new direction. So walk me through that. Right. So during the pandemic, while I was in school full time, I was at home with my children. They were like, mom, let's start a kid's boutique. So I started a boutique. It was called AMA. And while I was ordering like all the inventory and everything, I'm like, okay, I'm going to sell these clothes. I realized that I would be on my laptop for hours, just updating the website, colors, going in Canva, changing graphics consistently. And even with my friend, she, I met a friend and she was actually launching a boutique at the time too. And I'm like, here, I could do this banner for you. Or someone came to me and said, Hey, can you build my website? And I'm like, hi there asking but they were seeing things in me that I didn't see in myself mm -hmm. and so at the time I didn't realize it was going into design it, I just thought oh okay I'm gonna have this boutique so I started learning about business you know going through that whole shebang and then fast forward one day I was like you know what I want to sit there and go and I want to be a coach and for some reason I was just gonna be an e-commerce coach because I'm like you know I did a boutique so I know about selling products okay 
But again, now here I am for hours on the website. Again, I'm over here planning photo shoots. I'm paying attention to the color palettes. I'm paying attention to like what type of inventory, the colors of what I was picking out. And I'm realizing like, it's not that I was thrilled by selling products and being in the e-commerce space. It was because I loved color. I love visuals. Prior to going into this, I, well, I am a licensed cosmetologist. So I was doing hair. I was being artistic in that way. And I'm like, hold on. Okay, God, what are you showing? Right? Mm -hmm. So I started paying attention to my daughters and I realized that they love art. They would draw all the <laughs> time. My daughter's talking about wanting to bake cakes for a living, talking about because she want to decorate them. My other daughter's talking about fashion style, you know, fashion stylist. And she always was drawing. And I'm like, I'm seeing an artistic streak here. Yeah. And not to mention, my father can draw. And he was going to be wow. an architect. So I'm like, there is an artistic eye in my family. And mm -hmm. I think that <laughs> when you become an adult, especially a mom, <laughs> yeah. you kind of like shun away from what you're passionate about. Yeah. Right? And so when I started paying attention to my kids, I'm like, I'm seeing the child in me all over again. And I'm like, oh, okay. I used to draw. I used to do these things. And I'm remembering the things that I love to do. And it's just showing up in different ways. And so yeah. once I realized that, I'm like, you know what, God? Okay, I see what you're doing. You want me to go into design. And um, <laughs> yeah. And so then one day I'm in the Word and I'm reading the Word. And I, I see highlighted literally like there was two designers that were building. And I'm mm. like, the Word design popped out. I mean, I'm like that's what you're calling me to go do. Yeah, but I never totally thought that did. going into design was going to be something that would be fulfilling a purpose. Like I didn't think that that can be the case, but then I realized like we all serve a purpose and we're meant to fulfill that purpose, but also incorporate our talents and our gifts in the process. Like there is no one way to serve. And so that's how I got into doing design and you know, the rest is history. <laughs> Man, so so much to unpack there. So one thing, like, and I was like, Chani, don't forget, don't forget. When you said that people were seeing something in you that you didn't see in yourself. So, like, in t everything is always 2020 in hindsight. So now looking at that and reflecting on that, how do you feel, like, that people were seeing this thing and you were just, like, moving through life and kind of oblivious to it? How does that feel now? I feel like I should have been paying attention to the sign sooner, but I do believe everything happened in divine time. Yeah. You know, maybe it wasn't meant for me to really pay attention to at the time because I was learning other things about myself and maybe I yeah. would have sabotaged certain things at the time, you know? So, mm. you know, that's how I do look at it, but I'm like, wow, it is really important to listen to what people are saying because yeah. people know your greatness and mm -hmm. because we're so close to it sometimes you can overthink stuff and i yeah. am an overthinker oh me too <laughs> i am an you overthinker as charged. <laughs> right. and it's mm -hmm. sometimes i think we complicate things like we try to make things work or fit a certain narrative that we play in our head and it's just yeah. not that complicated so when yeah. i look back i'm just like you know if I would have known sooner, it would have made things easier for me. But I think that's why I'm so passionate about helping moms build brands because I'm like, I can sit there and, and I can be on a call with a mom and she can keep expressing the things that she wants to do, but I'm paying attention, right? Yeah. I'm listening to what she's really saying versus what she thinks she wants or versus yeah. what, you know, this confusion that she has is only because she's overthinking it when it's really mm -hmm. clear. So yeah. I write it down and I'm like, okay, so this is what I heard you say. Yes. You know? And yeah. then it's like, oh, that makes sense. And then mm -hmm. at that time, I kind of like piece things together, you know? So yeah. then I realized how important it is to have a conversation and listen in on whatever it is that someone's, you know, interested in because we have a tendency to start rambling and we miss it, <laughs> right? And we ramble yes. and miss it. And it's like, but you just said exactly what you needed to say, like, or what yeah. you you think that you don't have the answers, but you do. Yeah. And you know, and I think that's because we are so used, especially as moms, we're so used to caring for other people that sometimes it's hard for us to hear ourselves what we need because we're attuned to listening for what other people need. And right. so I think it's really powerful what you said about really listening to women when you're on that call with them, listening to what they're saying. I also think because there's a truth that what we do naturally 
does not always seem like something spectacular that people will need. It comes and so it comes natural easy. to us. It comes yes. So <laughs> yeah, so it's second we, nature. We tend to overlook it because what's easy for me may not be easy for you. Yeah. But because it comes so easy, it's like, people would pay me for this? <laughs> <laughs> but what I noticed exactly. even more to go back to what I was saying earlier what I no- noticed even more is that people would ask me to do things yeah. for them and I'm mm-hmm. like oh okay and I love to do it so I didn't care at the time Yeah. but I didn't realize how much how valuable it was of what I was doing yeah. like you know my daughter her grandmother at the time she was also opening a boutique Mm-hmm. And she needed her website built. Now, years ago, she opened um, this other business. She paid thousands of dollars for this website. Yeah. Now, here it is. I'm on <laughs> Shopify, and I'm just putting things together like nothing for her. And I'm like, you don't want to pay me? And I'm just doing it. And right. not realizing, like, you know, someone else asked you to design a website for them. And here you are mm. saying no. Mm. Not thinking. Saying, I'll do it for free. Do I'll do it for free. <laughs> right. Because you also have this comfort with people you know, and you yeah. feel like, oh, I'm doing a favor. It's not a big deal. There's no money attached to it. But then when yeah. it's time to charge, yeah. you may feel, you know, a little concerned, like, well, what if it's not good enough? And then that's a, right. a mindset shift you have to make, too. Yeah. So, and that's you know, another I, reason why I feel like some people think you're not qualified, especially stay-at-home moms. They don't mm-hmm. feel like they have the skill set to embrace their passions. Yeah. I think it's important... Um, for people to really document, because I don't know if you saved any of that stuff or if you have like pictures of that process. But while you were talking, it got me to thinking, man, we really need to be documenting all the things that we're doing because we don't know how it's going to show up in our life later. Right. And we it helps us to see that transition. And on top of that, it really helps us to say, well, those people were asked to eat, right? So we need to like, I put, um, I have a little jar that I bought like at the Dollar Tree or something. And every time I do something really good or something that someone compliments me on, I like write it down and I put it in that jar because we do all go through those moments where we're feeling like, am I, is this really good enough? Like, did I really do a good job on this? Can I really charge for this? And like, when you put a price out there, you're like, are they going to pay it? You know? So we really have to have like a brag jar or like a brag sheet or something like that and really build these accomplishments because the fact that someone asked you to do it already showed that you were qualified. It was not in the production of what you did for them. It was that they already asked you. They already saw the talent. They already saw the gifting. It was just for you to show up and like, see, ta-da, I proved to you that I am as good as you thought I was. <laughs> so when you're actually proving it to yourself more than you're proving yeah. it to them, they already know. Yeah, they you already know. know. People are watching. People are always yeah. watching. And yeah. like you said, document and the process. I was documenting the process for my boutique, but now mm-hmm. I'm starting to document the process for design. Like again, yeah. and I'm sure you saw like behind the scenes of building my website like working on that and asking for feedback what do you guys think about this do you guys mom yeah. do you like this like wanting feedback and when I'm getting the oh that I love it it looks nice so oh this came out good it's like I mean there you go that's that's all I need to hear there you they're go interested. <laughs> you know they're interested and even if they're not interested to work with me necessarily they may have other people that are in their community that may need my assistance so yeah. you know it's good to document your process, be confident in what you're doing. Someone's yeah. watching, someone will appreciate it. Yep. Yep. And, and that's the thing. Like sometimes when we're out here in these entrepreneurial streets, my friend uh, Monique dubbed that term. But when we're out here doing these things, we feel like, okay, is anybody watching? Because sometimes it's crickets. It's like I'm putting stuff out here, I'm putting content out, are people watching? And then it only takes that one phone call and you're like, uh huh. Somebody was watching, somebody was paying attention. So that's like a little bit of encouragement for all the moms out there who are on the entrepreneur journey, whether you're a stay-at-home mom, whether you're a homeschooling mom, whatever kind of corporate America mom, and you're trying to balance all the things, like just know that keep going. Like God put this passion in your heart for a reason. I do want to get back to that with you. God put this passion in your heart, this desire for a reason. It is such a profound thing that he would choose us to carry out a mission. He could make all the things happen, right? But he, it is a profound thing for him to say, but I choose you to do this thing. Mm -hmm. Like, 
Every time I think about it, I get goosebumps. I'm like, God, me? Really? Okay, well, I'm going to do it because you said that I could. You mentioned something earlier about, like, you got into the word. Like, you were feeling this calling. You were feeling this pull to do design. But then you really went back to the word and you got that confirmation. Like, were you looking for confirmation in the word or were you just, it's a normal thing for you to go to the word? Walk me through that. Well, the word is what carried me through this whole process. Mm. Back when I was doing the boutique, I wasn't in my word. Yeah. God called me at that time. He yeah. called me back to him at that time. Um, I started studying my word. And as I started studying my word, things started being removed from my life. And so all I can do is turn to the word and go talk to God about any and everything that I do. And so yeah. I already had a dream prior that gave me confirmation for not only really necessary business, but a call to leadership of being mm-hmm. a disciple and yeah. also serving women. I seen women in my dreams. Yeah. A lot of women in distress. And and now, mm. not to say it was necessarily only design. You know, also we're called, of course, to spread the good news and to also, you know, help those that are um, going through maybe some trauma and need some healing and everything like that. Because I'm not saying that my only call was to go into design because it's deeper right. than that. Because a yeah. lot of the, even the women that I come across, they're going through some other things. And so mm-hmm. I actually was going to go into life coaching um, yeah. and going into inner healing because of the fact that these women tend to to come to me and they start talking to me about some things and so in the process of me working with them I'm also helping them go through the process of healing and bringing yeah. them to the Lord so you know it wasn't only the fact of the design but I was in my word that day and he knew that I needed some confirmation Yeah, and then it was brought right in it was like right in front of my face because I read yeah. you know I read my word I read a lot of books in the Bible. Like I got through the Bible for the most part, especially <laughs> when I first got back in the word, he had me studying. Yeah. Um, but it was that day. And I'm like, okay, it's, I never think of it as a coincidence. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't like saying, Hey, if I open the Bible right now, you have to tell me, but I also did have it on my heart that he knew I wanted confirmation. Yeah. And that's I across it. Wow. You said that, um, like you were already, in the word, you were already on that journey of getting close. And then you also mentioned that you feel like it's bigger than that. It's bigger than just design. And what I heard was like, you're learning this task of design so that you can help people design their lives later. That's what I heard when you were talking about it. So I think like God stacks our, um, what do I want to say? Like he stacks our talents, right? For something much bigger. And so we'll do something and we're like, okay, that's cool, God. Thank you. Appreciate you. Love you. Right. (laughs) And then we're like, wait a second. I really needed that because in this season of my life, that thing that I felt was like not a major deal is a major deal. Like that's what's helping me break through to people and all that. So I really heard like, you're going to be designing people's lives and like really helping them to get to where they really want to be. And I think that that's awesome. And if that is a vision, like, I love it. I'm like, well, I will be glad to say I knew her when, you know? <laughs> right. And I agree. Um, it, the brand itself is a vehicle for a bigger purpose. Yeah. It's not, on the surface, it's going to pull people in. Yeah. But he had it on my heart, even back when I started doing the clothing, well, after the kids boutique, I started going in towards like wanting to launch woman clothing. And then I was heavy in the word and I kept reading the Proverbs 31 woman. He kept saying Mm -hmm. Proverbs 31, Proverbs 31. And I realized that he was building me up to be that Proverbs 31 woman. So I can help build other women up to be a Proverbs 31. So whether it's through them, being submissive to their husbands, whether it's them caring for their children. And that's why I said stay at home moms, moms in general. But the fact that I know that stay at home moms, they focus on their husband, their children. And they're like, okay, this is my first ministry, but yeah. they can serve beyond their home because yes. the Proverbs 31 woman served beyond her home. She was profitable yeah. in all her dealings. And so I know that this is my avenue to not only shift their mindset, bring them to the Lord or even help them grow in the spirit with the Lord, mm-hmm. but it's to be able to help them actually like see themselves 
the way he sees them and build a confidence to actually like go out and serve. And yeah. in, in turn, it's, it's bringing people in to his. Sh- yeah. You know, it is proof though, like, especially Proverbs 31 is proof that the Bible is prophetic. Um, because the fact that that verse is even in there, that they're talking about the Proverbs 31 woman in that historical time frame, women were not, you know, someone that you would like, you would put on a pedestal because look at women's suffrage and all the things that came after that, where women had no rights for such a long time. So the fact that it's even in there and that we have right now, like the fastest growing demographic of business owners are black women. That says something. That lets you know right there, like the Bible gave us the pathway to do it and gave us the okay that you can still manage home. You can still take care of your husband. You can be a wife. You can be a mother. And you can have, what is it? Prosperity in all of your business dealings. Like, I know this ain't Bible study, but baby, that's good. (laughs) Every time I have conversations, I can can think I'm going to talk about anything else, but he will come up. Oh, yeah, all the time. No matter what I do. (laughs) No matter what I do, we are going to talk about him. Okay? Yes. So, you know, that's just, I realize that. And one of the things, too, that I say, um, that I realized on my page originally on Instagram was that I was saying that a lot of you feel like you're not qualified. And, again, Mm -hmm. I had these same exact feelings being a stay-at-home mom because society makes you believe that you're not qualified because you're at home. I've yeah. applied to jobs with a college degree and still didn't mm-hmm. get calls back. Why? Because of my gap of history of being a stay-at-home mom. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the well, that's how I believe. You know, I know that's the reason why I think that happened. But, mm-hmm. you know, I know there's other moms out there facing that same thing. And so what I say is, God called Moses and he didn't believe he was qualified. And mm-hmm. that I use that scripture because I don't like to speak a lot, right? Because I used to feel like my voice was blocked. And I, I truly believe it was blocked for a reason because there's a lot of healing that would take place in my voice. And um, there's also, you know, I have a word. I have something to say, right? Yeah. It's going to free a lot of people. So I feel like it's blocked for a reason. But then I realized he told me that my identity was being attacked. And so that's mm-hmm. when I thought, oh, no, if that's the case. I have to speak because there's something there. A lot of yeah. times people we face blockages and the reason why we're facing blockages is because it's in a place where we're supposed to shine. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I Wherever started we are being attacked. <laughs> right. I started staying out my way and I'm like, you feel like you're not qualified, but Moses wasn't deemed qualified. Yeah. And like you were saying earlier, he could use anyone, but he mm-hmm. can choose who he wants to use for what purpose, for a reason. And I believe it's because it, it, it definitely brings the glory back to him. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have to be able to acknowledge that too. Like I could not do this by myself. I could not do any of this under my own strength. Like who am I? Right. I'm just flesh and bones, but because we are relying on him and because we are faithful, that is what allows us to continue to persevere, to drive forward. Like in any time I can say it wasn't me, baby, it was God. Like I've been in so many situations where when I come out on the other side, I'm like, I didn't see that one coming. Like, it was only but God. You. There's no way. <laughs> like, thank you, Holy Spirit, because it couldn't have been me. <laughs> so that is really, really good. I'm, you know, I, I'm glad to be talking to another person of faith, someone who believes in, in the word and in the journey and where we're going. And you talk so much about like brand and how like it is just a stepping stone. But I really want to identify, well, what is your definition of brand? So a brand is different than saying Brandon, mm. right? A okay. brand is the house, that, um, the foundation, right? So if you take bricks and you're building a house and you put the drywall and everything, that is you developing your brand. That is, in your brand, there's the values, your core messaging, your audience, you know, that, you know, why you exist. Yeah what you do, who you do it for, all of that is incorporated in the foundation of the house, the brand. Mm -hmm. The brand then, it would be the finishing touches, the paint, you know, the decorations, 
or the sprinkle sprinkle <laughs> like <on laughs> elements, right and yeah. so it, that's the visual identity and also it's the way i guess you can say brandon would be the personality of your brand so the voice the tone you use um the visuals it's how people can identify your brand yeah so you know that makes sense it right. makes a lot of sense in this right. brand Actually. versus the brand in. A lot of people jump yeah. into the brand in aspect and yeah. they think about, well, how can my brand look, right? Yeah. The identity, but they don't put enough time into the strategy of how they're going to, you know, connect with their ideal client, audience, mm-hmm. and make sure they incorporate, like, what are your core values? Like, what do you stand for? Yeah. So I I think that's the best way I've ever heard branding versus like brand um, really done because I just really picture the house and how do you want people how do you want to feel when you walk into your house right because that's the same thing that you want other people to feel when they Before walk into you your invite house. them to your house correct this would be and the if- marketing you're inviting people <laughs> to your house yes but you know how do you want it to be presented how is it yeah. standing next to the other houses on the same block. Yeah, because if you're if you're building a house, right, you're thinking about the entire layout. Like, so where's the bathroom going to be? Is there going to be a half a bath? Because I don't want people going, you know, into my master bedroom in order to use the bathroom. Like, you're thinking out all these logistics, and I think that's what you mean by like your values. You know, what are the core values? What is the messaging behind what you're trying to do? Who are you planning to invite right. into your space? I that is hands down like the best explanation I've ever heard and then the branding is really like those final touches I love interior design like I'm not an interior designer I'm like Sarah Jakes I'm like an online in my mind visual. <laughs> so yeah. and that's another thing about the design I just moved and I'm like decorating my whole house yeah. again design showing up in another way yeah so, that is awesome so you know? And I don't think I've ever heard it um, defined so separately. Like brand is different than branding. So right. is that like is that a common thing? And maybe I just didn't know, or is it something like you thought of, like as you're in your journey of really exploring this profession? No, there is just a difference. There's oh, okay. brand development, brand strategy versus brand um, design or brand in. A lot of times, there's agencies, right? So the agencies will have a brand strategist, someone that's going to map out the strategy for your brand. Like, again, Mm -hmm. who are you serving? What do you stand for? You have a business brand, what are your mission? um, What's your mission statement, your vision statement, your tagline, slogans, Mm -hmm. all those things. And how, what is your core brand message? Right. And then when it comes to the brand in, then that information will be taken over to the designer who would mm-hmm. then take that information and say, okay, well, how can I create a visual identity for this brand in a way that will connect with that audience? So like mm. if you're say, um, what is a good example? All right. I'm going to just use the cake design, like, because my daughter, right? So I was thinking <laughs> the other day about how, okay, my daughter's nine years old. She loves bacon and she loves design and cakes. Right. And so yeah. I was going to actually create a post about this. Having the ingredients to put in the cake, that's the foundation of the cake, what type of cake it's going to be, what's the theme of the cake. That is the brand, right? The eggs, the flour, everything you put in there before you even bake the cake, that's at the foundation of the cake or what type of cake you're going to create, right? The flavors, whatever. When it's time to decorate the cake and she wants a little Hello Kitty cake, then we're talking about we're going to do the fun and the colors, the sprinkles, the glitter. That is the visual identity. So what's at the core of the cake is the brand, the foundation, yeah. because mm-hmm. you can't make a lemon cake with strawberry ingredients, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. So <laughs> but you can still put whatever design you want. So if it's still going to be Hello Kitty, it's still going to be Hello Kitty. So right. that is how you want it to look. But if you're, if someone's saying, hey, bake me this specific type of cake, they want a lemon cake. Well, you got to get lemon in- ingredients. So you got to make sure the cake is made with lemon ingredients. And then if they say, well, this is how I want the design to be, the decorations of the cake. If it's for a five-year-old, then maybe doing Hello Kitty. But if it's for a wedding, you're not yeah. doing Hello Kitty. And so it's important no. what the flavors and all this is for the cake that they want. And you have to know who this cake is for before you can make it. Yeah. Because you're not going to just pass off a, a cake 
that has Hello Kitty and sprinkles for a wedding and say, no, oh, this is what you want it, right? No. So that's why it's so important <laughs> during the process of building the brand, during the brand strategy, knowing, well, who am I creating this brand for in the first place? Right. Because I'm not going to talk to one person the same way I'm going to talk to the other person. So yeah. that's the difference between developing the brand and then actually crafting effective messaging and then saying, well, you know what, when I build this website or when I uh, get this packaging done, it's going to have these certain sayings on it because this audience is going to be able to identify with that. Yeah. Now, what do you think is the most streamlined way without giving too much of like your framework and all that? Because I know this is what you do. What is the most streamlined way for people to identify who that target audience is? So... I believe that, first of all, my framework in general is clarifying your position, mastering your messaging, and building your identity, right? Those are the steps that will bring each client through, depending on what package or service, you know, they choose to work with me. But initially, like, say we are on a brand clarity call, and we're talking about, well, who is your audience? Well, I'm going to ask you, well, why do you even want to start the brand in the first place? Because if you say I'm going to start a brand just for money, that's not enough. No, it's not. <laughs> that's not like it, you're, no, not it's not. Keep, you're not going to keep working towards your brand if, it, if that's yeah. the only thing that's going to drive you to do it right mm-hmm. I will have a conversation and say like at the depths of their heart who is it that they truly want to help because they know who their audience is yeah they know who they want to serve and that person nine times out of ten especially if it's a personal brand you want to build is the person that you were before in the mm-hmm. past yeah. So it's what did you overcome? Like right. you're gonna help the person that was the old version of you. That's the easiest way to like figure out who that person is. What was yeah. the challenges that you were facing maybe two years ago, three years ago, before you came to this place? What was your experiences? What's your story? Because if you can identify who you were and how you were feeling, you'd be able to connect with that person. And then yeah. you bring them through the journey and say, Well, this, this is where I am now. This and how if you want to get here, here. Right, <laughs> this they're, coming is how you to you. they're coming to you because yeah. they're trusting you and they're like well she understands me well the reason why I understand you is because I am you for me there. yeah I've been there Right. I think it's um, man like what a simplified way to say this is how you really establish a business because I think we overcomplicate the process a lot I know I overcomplicate the process I won't speak for us I, I will over- overcomplicate it uh, always thinking about like, well, how do I monetize what it is that I know how to do, right? It's all, well, I went through this and I was Google University and YouTube University ended up and how do I really, and now I know how to do this thing. How do I monetize that? Who am I monetizing it for? But I think it's very good what you're saying that just simplifying that process by identifying, well, who were you before you went on this journey and how can you collapse that information into a pretty little package so that people do not have to go through all the Google university and the YouTube universities of the world and do all the things. I think that's pretty like just simplified it. Like who were you? What did you do? How did you get through the process? And then teach it to somebody else in charge. Right. Think about all the places (laughs) you were searching. What were were the things you were looking up? Right. What videos were you looking for when you were going Mm -hmm. through those challenges? If you write down everything that has happened to you within that process and you're like, hmm, because I know for me, I'm like, how, you know, how to build a business. And so that's the thing. A lot of people, they go and want to build a business, but they don't realize that in the process of building a business, you're actually building a brand. Mm -hmm. You can't have a business without a brand. Well, you can, you can go get your LLC, but that doesn't make you a brand, which then will make you really a business. The business is the back of the house. It's your finances, you know, your bank accounts, all the administrative (laughs) of how you're going to go marketing your, your brand. Your brand is actually at the forefront of what people see or their experience with you. And so you can go get an LLC. I've done it. I've got an LLC and I swore up and down that I had a, business a business right <laughs> on paper <laughs> but no one known about it you know and no one knows about it but me 
you know, and I'm going on YouTube and I'm getting the package in and all these things at the time. And it's like, that's cool and all, but I'm like, why is it that it's working for them and it's not working for me? And that's mm-hmm. because I'm trying to post or I'm trying to run ads to a website or my page. Yeah. And there's no real blank. There's no real brand existence. Yeah. There's no real brand experience. I'm just saying a little bit of this and a little bit of that because I saw some, someone else saying it. But yeah. their audience is not my audience. Right. Their brand is not my brand. Their mission is not my mission. So, you know, you have to be authentic to yourself and say, okay, I'm, I'm going to start this business. And that's the LLC aspect or sole proprietorship, whatever you want. But I need to focus more on a brand and building community. Mm-hmm. What are what am I going to be known for? Because that's what your brand is. It's what you're known for. Yeah. You know, the consistent message that you're saying over and over again that people will say, oh, that's that's Javana. Yeah. You know, that's her. Oh, yeah, she builds websites or she helps with design packaging and all these things. Like, they already know. They're not going to yeah. say, oh, I'm going to Javana for sales because Javana's not helping me with sales. Yeah. That's not my people- lane. <laughs> People also want to know who they're working with. So before they make an investment in you, they want to know who you are and they right. want to know what you stand for. They want to know that their money is in good hands. And that's also why branding is so important or why having a brand is so important. So they know what are those values? Like everybody who goes, I know I use this example a lot, but <laughs> we're doing it again. Chick-fil-A. <laughs> everybody knows when they go to Chick-fil-A that it's just going to be hands down, great quality service, right? It's going to be, the food tastes the same every single time. They're always going to say my pleasure. And you are always going to be craving it on a Sunday. And they're going to be closed. Like, every time. You're not going to want it on Monday. It's always on a Sunday. You're like, dang, I want some Chick-fil-A. Closed. But these are things that you know because they've already let you know what their values are, what they represent. Right. And, what and they, they are for. even um, Christian-led. They are Christian business. Yeah. So yeah. That, and that's another thing, right? That or automatically builds connection with other believers. Yeah. Support, just like Hobby yeah. Lobby, right? Yeah. But then, on the other hand, then there's uh, businesses like McDonald's that I had did a TikTok one day and I said, listen, at this point, I feel like it's part of their brand strategy. Why is the ice cream <laughs> team not working? It has Again. to be. It has Again. to be. <laughs> like, at this point, I'm like, this has to be part of their brand um, strategy because yeah. there's no way that no matter what state you go to, yeah, you find one that says, "Up, oh, our machine is not working." I I took a picture of the sign, put it on the story, and I said, "Listen, yeah. this is part of their strategy because there's no way." And it gotta that. be. I, like, you're is, right. I, it's gotta what be. Is the problem here, like that's how I started feeling. I said, and a company that big, a company that big, you right. gotta know that they got the money to invest in repairing or rectifying this issue. But now it's like, no, we're gonna keep them talking. We're going to keep them talking. Plus, they're not known for their ice cream. They're known for their burgers. So people are going to show up anyways because they want burgers. It's not like they're going to leave. Like, it's not Dairy Queen running out of ice cream. You know what I mean? And then we're loyal. Like, that's the thing. Like, they can do that as much as they want. We're still going to go there. I'm still still going to go there. I'm complaining, but I'm still online. Yeah. Yeah. You waiting know? in the line it's a big old sign oh and i hate like in march girl you know sent me down a rabbit hole so in march right is when the shamrock shake comes out i love the shamrock shake but i'm literally waiting all year so i can have that one shamrock shake and when i see the sign say oh ice cream machine is broken or not available i'm like but y'all only do this once a year i don't right why, why are you even advertising products that you know you can't sell <laughs> But I right. think you're right. It's part of them branding right. at this point. Right, there after waiting on that long line, you might as well get something else. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, that's how then I you're talking like yourself. <laughs> you're talking yourself out of You're like, I probably didn't need that milkshake right. anyways. <laughs> yeah, do me a favor. Now, I know I have no business being on this line at this time. I'm talking about I need a milkshake. <laughs> it's bad enough I'm getting cool. a burger and some soda. Like, <laughs> I shouldn't even be doing this, but... <laughs> But yeah, you know, and I think that um, that's another thing a lot of a lot of people don't realize. Like, you gotta be mindful of the brand reputation that you have. Yeah, because people talk, and I learned this back in college too. It's like, you know, one client, one customer can bring you like ten, right? Yeah. Whereas one bad experience can make you lose the potential of having more clients. Yeah. So you don't take the time to say, let me sit there and build this strategy out, but I'm just rushing to go make a sale or, you know, I'm marketing my business, well, brand, 
you miss a lot of opportunities because their first experience with you may not be the best because you don't have the foundation set. Yeah. Oh, but let's talk about that a little deeper because I do think that somebody listening is going to be like, oh, but if I don't have all the things together, then that means I cannot do the thing. No, no, no. I don't think that's what you're saying. No. I think what you're saying is because I know there's somebody listening who's going to see, I knew it. I, I can't, I can't launch my business until I have that website. I can't do this until I have that thing. No, that's not what she's saying. What I hear you saying is that you need to understand, well, what is my business about? Who is my business for? That type of foundation right. before you invite people in. So, because I know somebody. Right. I can Clarity. hear it now. You <laughs> right. Clarity. That's yes. what I'm saying. So that way, even if you go and you go on Canva and you say, you know, I'm going to create a website on Canva, or maybe you're going to get like a landing page through your email marketing platform, right? Even if mm-hmm. that's all you're going to have is a link, yeah. you need to know who's going to click on that link. Because when you drive traffic to that link, you have to have very strategic messaging to keep them there. Mm-hmm. If they go on that page and it says, something so random or so general they're not going to yeah. feel like oh this is the place for me and then they leave so they don't even get a chance to see what you have to offer so they're not going right. to book anything on your calendar but yeah. if you know what to say despite not having a whole full blown website but just having a landing page or a link or even if you're creating a post and you only have a calendar and you don't have any website at all it's what mm-hmm. you're saying and who you're speaking to that's going to make them want to work with you you don't have to have like everything put together like when you start yeah because i mean really like if you wanted to do life coaching um Mm -hmm. for other stay-at-home moms right because we're talking we're listening all those stay-at-home moms are listening so if Mm -hmm. you're talking to that person you're like well i want to coach somebody else do the same thing baby all you literally need is a calendly link like you could do it just that simple just that simple so i don't want anyone thinking oh i gotta have all the things and i gotta go spend all the money and it can get very overwhelming very right. fast. Use what you have. God is already free. placed in Go your hands. Google <laughs> Use yeah. Google. Meet. It's free. Yeah. Go on there. Um, and then even for the calendar, if you well, I'm not quite sure how the price what the price is for um that one, but I do know Tidy Cow. It's twenty nine dollars mm. for a lifetime. For really? Lifetime. Tidy Cow? Tidy Cow. It's T I D Y C A L. Because here I am paying, I think it's twelve dollars a month. What? No, 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 no. But do so, they do automations and stuff? Now I got questions. Do they do automations on Tidy Cow? Um. So I wouldn't say necessarily. I'm, what do you mean by automations? Like so, like um, sending call, out up, you know? updates and like, can you schedule like um? So for okay, so for my podcast services, one of the things that I have is it's. Specifically through um, Calendly, but it'll send them like emails beforehand. It automatically does it. I mean, I had to go in and set it up, obviously, but it'll send them out like to nurture them, to warm them up before we actually have our discovery call. And so that was one of the things I was like, man, I don't want to pay this $12 a month, but I love that. I love that it can do that. So if Tidy Cal can do that, then Calendly. Also, well, Calendly is a black owned business and I, I just got to support my people. <laughs> but but for if you well it does have like reason. um a reminder like it does mm-hmm. set a reminder before the calls okay I know that, like it has that automation and it also allows you when they do go to book a day on your calendar you can create um questions okay yeah that's good too and you can yeah. collect payments on there which oh that's awesome mm-hmm. so yeah. you can collect payments through there um and it can integrate with Stripe, but I think that they're okay. going to stop collecting it through Stripes. They have now these T payments or something like that. But the good thing about the form is that you are you can ask questions. And that's really important because you want to ask mm-hmm. questions before you start working with any client. Because yes. you're going to want to address, like, what are their pain points, their desires, their objections, their motivations. Yeah. And so that way you can tailor your services or your program to fit the needs their needs and be able to also have good copy on on that page like when i was saying about Mm -hmm. master messaging you want to know what they're saying and how you can use what they're saying to incorporate it in your messaging yeah oh and i think one of the most important questions to put on that is do you have a significant other 
or a partner that needs to be involved and in whether in the whether you proceed or not <laughs> because I cannot I had to learn like put it on there like do you is somebody else cuz they will love to say that so for anyone who's starting a business there's a little nugget for you Make sure you ask them, are you going to have to check with your man first before you give me this money right. or with your woman? Right. <laughs> and from personal experience, I know it to be true. Mm -hmm. um, it's not even necessarily asking, but it's also the fact of this is one thing that I realize, especially stay at home moms, right? Yeah. If you're on one income and it's your husband's income, mm -hmm. he has the buy-in power. So the person right. that you want to work with isn't the ne necessary the one that like okay so if you want to work with someone right and you're saying okay this program is fifteen hundred dollars or thousand dollars whatever it is it don't matter if it's fifty dollars yeah you have an idea to work with this person you're like okay i want to invest in this but you're gonna go to your husband and say hey can we afford to do this or i went over the budget for the household this is what I want to do. And this is what I can expect if I invest. This is the return on investment if I invest. Yeah. In this and I feel yeah. like a lot of moms have mom guilt about doing so. Because if mm -hmm. you're, even though you're working in a home all day, taking care of the babies, taking care of everything for your husband, if you're married, and getting all the things together, he's out working. And when he does bring in the paycheck, you probably feel like, wow, like he's already paying the rent. He's paying the water bill. He's paying the electricity. The kids need new shoes. The kids, And then it makes you almost feel guilty to say, hey, I need to take this amount of money to invest in myself. Yeah. But it's yeah. very possible. You know, if it you is. know how to communicate it to your husband. And I feel like the person that's going to provide the service or the, the coaching program to you need to have very effective messaging that convinces and mm -hmm. have the husband buy into it. Yeah. Because if you I can't think, tell him why, he's going to be like, that's a waste of money. <laughs> like, <laughs> so it's not only, um, you know, talking to your audience, but the person that has the buying power. Yeah. Well, which is why it's so important to know exactly who your audience is. And the benefit of asking that question and like in a, you know, pre-qualifying questionnaire is that you can follow up with them before you even have the meeting. And you can say to them, hey, you know, I see that you know, someone else is going to be involved in the decision making. Are they available to be on the call as well? Right. Or it could be, you know, are, will they have any questions before our call so that I can answer it for them? That way the conversation is happening before they get on the call. So there's so many benefits to asking the question. And I love what you said about really speaking to the person who has the buying power, because that can go in so many different directions. Like even if you're speaking to someone in corporate, like if you're looking to get corporate clients, like for speaking gigs or something like that, well, who is the one that's actually signing the check? So you might be, you know, going through all of the logistics with someone maybe in the marketing department, but perhaps the person above them is actually who's signing the check. So your messaging has to be geared towards them, right. not necessarily towards the person that you're interacting with on a daily basis. So yeah, that's really good too. That's true. Um, that's definitely true. And again, from personal experience, my husband, I would have, I have to explain stuff to him over <laughs> and over and over again. And most of the time he doesn't understand what I'm talking about. And I don't really expect him to because he's not in this industry. He, this is not what he does, right? Yeah. So he, he doesn't understand exactly everything I'm saying when I'm like, I need this because of this and that because of that. And he's just like, how much is it going to cost? Like, <laughs> like just give point, me the number. You know, yeah, he just wants to know the number. Okay. And at the end of it, what can I expect? Are you going to be able to do this then? Okay, cool. Yeah. You know, and so that's another thing. Being able to understand what it is that this person is going to offer you so you can deliver that message to the other person in a way yeah. that they're going to understand it. Because if you don't even understand how they're going to help you, right? how they're going to understand why they should give you the money for it. Like, why, why should I be told? <laughs> Yes. Going back to what you said about clarity, though, and like having that clarity, that is so important because I cannot, I can't tell you how many times I've heard people. So what do you do for a living? They're like, oh, well, I help um, people. They're, everybody's got their I help statement. Right. But sometimes their I help statement is way too long. And I'm like, baby, I didn't catch none of that. I have no idea what you do. And they're using very like lofty language and all these things. When you told me I'm a brand strategist, I'm like, OK. I understand what that is, right? If someone asks me, well, what do you do? I'm a podcast producer and I'm a business consultant. Okay, I know what that is. But they get into these long, like drawn out explanations. And I'm like, baby, do you know what you do? Because I didn't understand none of that. 
<laughs> right. Like it should be simplified uh, to where a child would understand. Well, they yeah. would say like a fourth grade level, which my daughter is not. She's still in fourth grade. So I feel like, and that's why I said about like how to bake a cake. It, it's in simple yeah. terms. It's very simple. You know, if you look at some of the content I have on my profile, like I break it down about like, oh, if you go to the doctors, you have a problem and, you know, and you want the baby to be better. And it's not because you're like, oh, I just like going to the doctors, but no, you actually want it to get rest that night. And yeah. that was what motivated you to go. That's what you desire, yeah. right? Um, yeah. So I think that it's really important to understand again, when you have clarity in your positioning, you can have a clear positioning statement. Yeah. The other day I was looking at someone's um, account and she's a nice woman and, you know, I see what she does. I understand because again, I observe, I pay attention. Mm-hmm. I audit people's accounts, even though they're not knowing that I'm doing this. But um, <laughs> while she has other credentials, mm-hmm. that's amazing. You have a master's degree. That's amazing. Amazing. You have a bachelor's degree, but is it relevant to what your ideal client needs to know? Yeah. Is it going to help them make a decision to work with you? Right. Because you can say I have these degrees, but do you have degrees in what it is that you say you're offering or what, what your position is, your expertise? Yeah. And so I think that's important when you're thinking about what your credentials are, what qualifies you. But I also think that you need to be very clear on what they can expect to work with you. Like if you're saying I work with um, women entrepreneurs from the ages of 25 to 40 show up confident online do their content like without spending money on ads then say yeah. that right now not that long like you don't have to say it that long but <laughs> yeah. get it real clear that okay this is who you are this is what I hope you do and this yeah. is what you could expect to work with me don't just run on and just keep speaking and rambling because people get confused if they don't understand it I say like in less than maybe 30 seconds if that <laughs> Because yeah. our attention span is very short, they're gonna click out. Yeah, so true. And the thing is, first of all, I blame I blame TikTok and I blame Instagram for why our attention spans are dwindling. Because I already did not have a very long attention span, and I feel like it just gets worse. So I have like restricted myself from Instagram. Mm-hmm. Like, we're not going on Instagram. I'm gonna go on LinkedIn, and maybe I'll read an entire article. Because help me, Jesus, with this minute and thirty second like swipe fest that we do. And I just think it's so, yes, people do lose their train of thought when they're, or like, you know, they lose focus when they're listening to what someone is saying and they're talking for entirely too long. I think why that's happening besides, you know, Instagram and TikTok being the problem is it, the more you ramble on is the more people realize that I don't think you're confident in what it is that you do. And that's why you're having to over explain to me what it is that you do absolutely. because you're not like you know what I mean you're not I've I've realized that I've had that struggle before before I knew who I really wanted to serve the reason why I was having a hard time is because I said women entrepreneurs this is when I said I want to be an e-commerce coach because that's what Mm -hmm. I thought I had to do before everything else was was revealed to me right yeah so I was getting revelation in bits and pieces but I'm like I'm still not clear it still don't make sense it still don't make sense and then it started making sense. Though, yeah. the minute I understood, it wasn't just women entrepreneurs. It was like a light bulb went off. I said, it's moms. Yeah. They're moms. Okay. But you know what? It's not the mom that's working the nine to five because I can't relate to her. It's the mom that's at home that's walking around all day, getting her children ready for school, possibly homeschooling her children because I had to homeschool my children during the pandemic. Oh, I homeschool mine now. So um, I understand. Was, <laughs> listen, those teachers are not appreciated enough because I don't want to do it. <laughs> so I'm like, it's the mom that is either dropping her children off, doing those morning runs, coming home. She's at home. She's like, okay, like me, now what to do? Now I'm not yeah. eating. Okay, mm. I took care of everything at home. Now what? And then yeah. I have a time to pick up my children. I have a, a evening routine and then got to get up and do the same thing the next day. Or well, it's a mom yeah. like you where you're homeschooling and you're just trying to find quiet time to work on what it is that you need to do. Is it during a nap time? 
Is it during a time when your kids are out and then at extracurricular activities, right? Mm-hmm. So it's that mom, not the mom that's going to work nine to five and she's there all day and then maybe the children in school or in daycare and then she has other challenges. But that's why I think it's so important to understand what you're called to serve because yeah. you can understand them on another level. Yeah, absolutely. Like really refining. And I love how you got so granular that it's not the nine to five mom. It is the stay at home mom. Because, and that's okay. Like we hear so much conflicting information about who you can serve and who you can't serve. Like for me, um, when I first started, I had a heart to work with single moms because I am a single mother. I've been right. doing it since my babies were like six months old. I was pregnant with my second daughter and my oldest was six months old been a single mom since then and I had a heart to really help them to do more than what they're doing like you can and you hear all this trash that these people single moms are damaged and bro- baby we all out here broken we all out here needing Jesus and I remember I went to um like a an event in Atlanta and I was so excited to be there because I was gonna be in a room with all these people who were like making millions of dollars and I was like baby I'm here and I had signed up for their program and we're all sitting at a dinner table talking and the lady says, well, what do you want to do? And I said, I really want to help single moms to start their own business. And she was like, hmm, you should work with people who have money. And I thought, what? I'm here. You're here not called to serve the ones that have money. But here I am, a single mom, and I had enough money to put $7,500 in your pocket earlier today, right? $2,500 to get here. And here you are telling me that I need to work with single moms who have money? First of all, that is such, like, says everything about her and what she thinks. Because there are women working in corporate who are making multiple six-figure incomes who are single moms. Like, it doesn't mean... It's a stigma. It's a stigma. And I don't like stigmas. Yeah. And that's why I'm so passionate about stay-at-home moms because yeah. I say I want to shift the narrative from stay-at-home mom to a balanced mom yes. made because yes. you are more than you at home and while society wants to tell you oh you don't have a real job take mm-hmm. care of those babies that's a real job you're a yes, single mom is. and you're working and just because you're a single mom that you are not your experiences that of things that has happened in the past yeah. you are what you are today and what you yeah. made of and so yeah. I don't like when people have these stigmas and they just judge Mm -hmm. right and they can't tell you what god is doing through you you can sit there and you may get clients that pay you 7500 just like you were going to pay them 7500 and did and did (laughs) right and did and it's it's not fair to say then don't make any of your offers accessible to the single mom that can't afford right but that would be up to you on how you want to position your brand and your offers and who are the, the most viable clients to work with you because some everyone needs someone. Some people want to be more affordable and some people, they want just all premium high ticket offers. But if you're called to help people that may not be able to afford high ticket, then you help them. Or maybe you have a mixed up, but that's why it's important to understand like, what are the group of women that you're going to help? Which your yeah. women are single moms. Mm-hmm. And there's their income ranges. Their circumstances yeah. are different. But one thing they have in common is that they're single moms and they're trying to step into this entrepreneur space or street, mm-hmm. right? This mm-hmm. street. And they're trying to make a living for their babies and they shouldn't be penalized for being single moms to do so. And you know, and the thing, like, this is how you know God is in control and not silly people at a dinner table who tell you that you need to work with people who can afford it. Because every single mom that I had while I was running Mommy Mogul Mastery, the um, business program, every mom that came through that program was a single mother. And it was a high ticket offer. And they paid it. So, I mean, I was like, okay, God, I see what you do. (laughs) I see what you're doing, Lord. Not what people are saying. You're not yeah. going to tell me what I'm supposed to do when the one that created me told me to do something else. So that's why, what do they say? Um, God does not qualify. He does not call the qualified. He qualifies, he qualifies the, the call. Called. And it is such a beautiful thing. Girl, when she told me that I was, but in the, the way my mind works, it just makes me want to go harder. I'm like, okay, lady, <laughs> like, I can't believe I just paid you this money. And I, at the time where my mindset was, I believed her. I believed her. I thought, okay, so maybe I have to work with like other people. But then that I think is what sends you down this rabbit hole of like, um, like imposter syndrome, because it was at that point that I started trying to be something else. 
like thinking that well I have to fit but baby my people are single moms they understand like and right. God just sent them to me I'm surrounded because then <laughs> you're, surrounded. you're comparing yourself yeah. to what people are saying how you need to show up and then it's not mm-hmm. authentic to you like yeah. you need to know your superpower at the end of the day you need to know what God yep. put in you for you to serve these people and only he knows what he put in you and if he's telling you these are the people you need to serve. You can't listen to somebody else that don't know how he created you. And so that's how I, I look at it. I'm like, I, you know, I thought I was only going to stay the traditional route. I'm going to graduate school. I'm going to get my college degrees. Okay. And yet I did, but I never saw where it was going to take a turn and say, okay, but no, you're going to serve moms that don't have these qualifications. <laughs> Yeah. I just had you there so you can see that there's another way. Yeah. You can utilize some of the skills you've learned in the process, mm-hmm. but you're not going into corporate. Yeah. And, you know, as valuable as a degree is, I don't think that it, I, it just no longer carries more weight than life lessons because I went to school for organizational leadership. Right. And I, that's great. But everything that I've learned about how to be a great coach how to be a great podcast host. All of what I've learned has just been from life. Right. Like who God made me to be. And so I, listen, I, girl, we at over an hour now, we could probably just keep on talking, keep on talking. But I really want the last thing that you said to be the message that we leave on that whatever you are feeling called to do, whatever you feel like God is purposed and assigned to your life, whatever you're anointed to do, then that is the thing that you have to pursue. We have a command, right? In Joshua 1.9, one of my favorite Bible verses says, have I not commanded you? Do not be discouraged for the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. So you might be afraid to step into this new thing, but you have been commanded. It is a mandate on your life that you have to follow what God is telling you to pursue. And he's got you. He's got you. You're going to be all right. Read that Proverbs 31. But do it. You know, read that Proverbs 31 woman and know that you have the power. It is within you. We are the blessing, right? He who needs to, he who finds a wife, finds favor, has finds a good thing and finds favor in the Lord. Like we are the gifting. And so sometimes we forget. We forget how amazing we are as women because we are just serving, serving, serving. But baby, you are the blessing. You're the blessing. So, any other words for people before we go? This was so good. (laughs) Well, I do want to invite them to my free guide. I did provide you with the link for it. Yes, I will put the link in the show notes. Yes, so if any moms are feeling like they have this mom guilt, they have these limitations, you know, they just need to shift their mindset. They want to identify any spiritual gifts that they have or talents so that way they can build their brand authentic to you know how they were created um and also need the step-by-step process um to have clarity and build a brand i do have that free guide with the link that will be posted um so that way you can sign up for it for free and um it'll walk you through the process and then if you want to take the next step to work with me i am offering 90 minute um brand clarity calls so we can clarify your messaging well not necessarily your messaging but going through the process of identifying who your audience is, what you offer, and, you know, even why you're building the brand in the first place. So that way it can get you started. Yeah. And I can tell you're brilliant at that. So anybody who's listening, if you are going through the journey and like, maybe you've been on it for a little while, you've been doing the entrepreneurial thing, but you really know that you need to focus on clarity. Like what does my brand stand for? Um, so I can take it to that next level. Like definitely hit Javon up. I'm going to put all the links down below and her full bio. So you can see like this lady is amazing, right? right. So you can I'm read right everything now. about her. Awesome. <laughs> we go hype you up. Um, So make sure that you get all the information. If you're watching on YouTube, then you can find that information in our description box. If you're listening um, everywhere, the pods are casted, then you can find that information in our show notes. It has been real. This has been great. And I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay tuned for the next episode.